Envisaging vocational rehabilitation. Vocational rehabilitation is a term that refers to a process of compelling and enabling people to overcome disability so they can work. It has existed for less than 100 years, but work has been a primary occupation for vast numbers of people for centuries. So why now vocational rehabilitation? What is the world in which vocational rehabilitation is wanted and needed? This is a look over approximately 90 years in Aotearoa, New Zealand, exploring what makes and keeps vocational rehabilitation intelligible and what that might tell us about ourselves. In a rhizomatic world, work is different for each individual, limited only by ability to find or create your niche. No one is too disabled to contribute, and contribution is what it's all about, from unique individuals, entrepreneurs of themselves, where career is work on the self, and self is what one contributes to society. Self is both the raw material and the product goal, hence vocational rehabilitation is work on the self. As better selves are the substance of a better society, vocational rehab is needed to ensure that better selves can continue to be pursued. On the edges, vocational rehabilitation merges with career guidance, where disability is becoming a brand belonging to a wider class of significant career-defining life circumstances. Rights rather than services are the order of the day. In the twilight of welfareism and the dawn of neoliberal reform, special workplaces are no longer equalising but discrimination. Schemes that separate rather than integrate impede normalisation, so sheltered employment comes under close scrutiny. Industry is less the occupation of life and more the opportunity for self-development. Limited access to real work where self-confidence, sense of identity and personal wealth arise from can be shown to exacerbate the disabling consequences of many injuries and health conditions. Government-funded participation is fast becoming passé. Real participation is a right and society is accountable. Vocational rehabilitation must become responsive. A second world war is over, and trade training for disabled ex-soldiers is winding down, with a sharp decline in numbers recruited into official schemes. But vocational rehabilitation has not seen its last days. The citizen army is no more, but universal citizenship is now in play. All men have an equal right to participate as citizens, but some cannot work, living a monotonous, shut-in existence away from the rest of society. The vocational rehabilitation machinery of the 1920s is not shut down, but adapted and redeployed in the cause of equal citizenship. Those civilian disabled who have never worked begin to enter the workplace through sheltered employment. Special workplaces for those unable to obtain normal employment. The industrial machine grinds on in the wake of war. While the returned citizen army, nearly 40% of whom had been wounded, discovers many of their number on the outside, no longer able to find and sustain employment. Industry, characterised by full-time, specifically skilled or physically intensive work, for example trades, farming, public works, forestry, heavy factory work, has spat out and left behind those outmoded or disabled during war service. An inquiry beginning in 1929 
prompted by ongoing appeals by the Returned Soldiers Association for something to be done, positions it as a problem for government, the creator of the Citizen Army, and vocational rehabilitation is discussed and initiated as trade training.